this made Billy laugh so much he rolled on his back, rocking from side to side, holding his belly and cackling like a hyena. Minnie started to tickle him under his arms. No! No! yelled Billy. Whoa there! Minnie stopped tickling him suddenly. Billy, look! What is that? She pointed at the ground. Between them was a hollow in the dark brown soil where the duff gave way to a muddy path. Hey, look, there's something in this muddy path away from the duff, she said. What's duff? asked Billy. Oh, Billy, 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 duff is this layer of old leaves, twigs, bits of bark and pine needles, you know, the brown stuff. There was something curious about the shape of the hollow and Minnie crouched down to look more closely. She brushed some leaves out of the impression with her fingers and realised then what it was she was looking at. It was a footprint. It was a footprint of what looked like a human foot, but a human giant's foot because it was so very large. I would start by introducing myself and explaining briefly about my wanderings around the world which took me across America and Asia before settling in New York, having two kids and then moving back to London. I would also use maps to show how very, very large the United States is. It's a little bit of geography, a little bit of history. It takes a couple of minutes to explain how the pioneers travelled across America and how long it must have taken to gradually reach across America and encounter all the Native American tribes who each had a different word, a different name in their language for the big hairy people of the forests. Which leads me on to props. I would have props such as this 17 inch footprint which I drew. That's a 17 inch actual size footprint. These can be passed around in a classroom setting but here they have quite good drawings from the book. There's a diagram showing all the cabins and the trails in the forest and where they found the footprint and where the Sasquatches hang out. They have to move one of the cabins significantly. I might have some proper visuals by then of beautiful redwood trees and beautiful ferns and stuff. We might give them a glimpse of someone's artistic rendering of a Sasquatch. The whole point of my chat around the book is my belief that the more a child knows about nature, the more they care about it. So the worksheets are nature-based exercises. There may be some writing exercises, descriptive challenges about maybe describing a fern or describing a tree.